Well hello to you all. Now before I go too far into this uh, brief introduction to Label Maker 3.33 um, I must just let you know that I'm nothing to do with Acoustica. I'm just a Johnny come lately who um, was forced to buy this package because the software provided with my Canon MG8250 um, was free and everybody knows what you get for free. Now I'm afraid with the limited time that I have to do this review um, we're going to have to go through things fairly quickly. So I'm going to start off by saying to you that you can set up disc labels, paper labels or printing directly to disc templates. You can also set up front labels for inside jewel cases. You can set up booklets for the inside of your DVD or CD and then you can set up the back face and covers, paper covers, which show you the titles on each of the spines. Before we start any artwork, we must establish that this blank disc that we're working on on the screen is the correct template for what we require. Now in my particular instance, I require the template to be this one, which is a Canon 8520, and I'm going to go for full face printable DVDs. Now, I can also come up here to file and I can do some editing of the template. Here we've got a picture of the disc as it goes into my carrier and that's how it's printed in the Canon A250. If the printing is not perfect you can make minor adjustments with this setting here. Now the only other adjustment that might happen may happen is the size that you want your printing to cover. If I press reset that's the standard size for this template. My particular requirements are for that template to be set to 117 and to increase the centre hole up to 20. Now at that point I'm happy and I say OK. If I now go to File, Preferences and there's an Auto Run option, make sure that this second box is ticked so now every time I open up a project it will open up with this particular setting. Once you've loaded your software, visit the Acoustica on the internet. Here you will be able to download a whole new set of templates. I will just point out at the top of this design section that you've got a blank canvas that you can always come back to and delete everything else that's on your page here. Just as a quick example, if you go to the Acoustica website, you can pick up thousands of designs. For example, this is a pre-prepared project for you and all you have to do is modify the project title and uh, start doing some more stuff which we'll talk about in a minute. Backgrounds, again, thousands of them to be loaded down. Now, the art section is stuff that's on your own computer and I'm gonna be choosing to use some of this stuff to demonstrate today. You can see what I've just done there. I've double clicked on that and it's just dropped it onto the template. I can click and I can't do anything with it except remove the background image. The most flexible way of putting this onto the template is to drag it onto the template. So set this up by dragging the corners so that it's a nice big picture and then we should be able to move the picture around to get the tiger in the right place. Now we don't want to cut off too much of the tiger and it would be nice to have his legs on the side there. Now the only reason I'm showing you this is so that you can get an idea that the picture can be manipulated to suit your requirements. So precision placement of photographs is an essential feature of any package that I've tried to use and this is one of the most flexible ones that I've come across. We'll drag this particular picture across I'll park it in the corner to start with. It's a nice flamey picture. I don't want to lose too much of the flame in the centre hole, so there we go. I've fairly accurately been able to place that so that most of the flame is moving around the hole and I've got a nice dark background. Right, we're now going to look at this tracks feature. I have just recently loaded a, a CD into my CD player and I'm going to have a look at the disc itself and it's collected all this information about my CD that's in there. There's a very important tick box at the bottom here. T 
ticket and you will see that the tracks have now appeared on this CD. I can now close the track listing box and if I touch any of this text I open up a text containment box. First thing I want to do is to change the colour so that it's a lot more obvious. So we select white and there we have white text. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, say 12, and I'm also going to change the font to something like comic. There we go. Now I think that's probably a little bit big, so we'll come back to maybe about 10 point. Something that's happened down here, we've got a, a very nice option, which gives us a chance to set all the text to the left side. We can even do something fancy like set it up in a spiral. But I think for my purposes, we won't worry about any of these options down here. We'll just go for a straightforward left side. Now we could, if we wanted, gradually move this round. If we move the whole of the box round, you'll see what happens. The text follows the edge of the CD. If we don't like the way that this text is broken up, we can change the font again to maybe 8 point. Right, what we're now going to do is to add the artist by coming up here to the text box and creating a new text object. Let's just move this a shade and we'll highlight that to delete it and we'll type the artist in. Doesn't look very dramatic, does it? Let's change it to something like that. Let's take the font up to maybe something like 20. Let's expand the box. If we click on this arrow here, we open up a further text properties box at the top here. <coughs> now there's all sorts of things that you can choose by clicking on these. In this particular instance, I've decided that I'm going to turn the text upside down. I'm also going to use a drop shadow on the text. So we will add a drop shadow now, the shadow can be any colour. I've set this to an extreme colour because Lady Gaga is very extreme. Now, the reason I've put Lady Gaga upside down is because of the title of this particular CD. We will generate another text box in which we will put the title of the CD. Again, not very dramatic. So let's go for a nice bold font, which we'll make a lot bigger. And maybe we'll change its colour to something a bit violent, like pink. And then maybe it will be a good idea to change that to curved text. And if we look, there's an arrow down here, which gives us the opportunity to put the, tur the curved text down the bottom. We can drag the bottom and move the text out. We can then go to, the, go to these options up here and we look at text angle. Sorry, curving. And we can change this fixed angle. Now I don't know why it says fixed angle because we're just about to change this into a floating angle. And there we go. One final thing I want to show you. If I double click a letter not only do I get the text box, I also get the text properties box. Now the text manipulation on this program is incredibly powerful. I can sort out just a letter or I can sort out a word and I can change its color. I can change its size. We've only touched on a few of the features of this very powerful software package. I do hope I've stirred your imaginative juices and that you will go to the Acoustica website and take advantage of their seven day free trial. Thank you for joining me.